Good afternoon, one and all. Welcome to the last day of International Faculty Development Program, fostering digital core competencies in academic landscape under UGC Parama scheme in association with Kerala State Higher Education Council. Today's FDP session is on the future for immersive technology in education, augmented reality, and the resource person is Mr. Jose J. Maliakil, Assistant Professor, St. Joseph <laughs> College of Communication, Kote. Participants, please note that we'll have a short valedictory function soon after the technical session. Feedback link of all the previous days will be posted in the chat window along with today's during this chat. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Julie M. David, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Applications, MES College, Marambali, to chair the session. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Babin. <clears throat> A warm good afternoon to all. First of all, I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here with us in this last session of our faculty development program. <clears throat> I am very happy to welcome all of you. Well, I won't take too, too much of your time. Today's topic is the future for immersive technology in education, augmented reality. It is a technology that superimposes a computer generated image on users view of the real world. This providing a competitive view. Actually, it is an enhanced version of the real physical world. And it is achieved through the use of digital visual elements with an extensive experience and in-depth knowledge <coughs> of our resource person, Mr. Jose J. Malikin, Assistant Professor, St. Joseph College of Communication, Kottayam is the apt person for this topic. I would like to say a few words about him. Currently, he is working as an Assistant Professor of St. Joseph College, Kottayam, and also the Director of Ninjas Digital <coughs> Virtual Reality Private Limited, Todubuya. He is the <coughs> first rank holder in MA and Multimedia and third rank holder in BA Multimedia. It is in, and he is inclined to graphic designing, creative thinking, 3D animation, photographic. On behalf of MES College Marambali and IQAC team, I welcome you, sir. <clears throat> Without any further delay, I invite Mr. Joe, sir, to handle this session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Julima. Hello, warm good afternoon for one and all. And welcome to today's FDP webinar. The future of immersive technology in education, augmented reality. And thank you for taking time out and being here today. Thank you, Babi Amam, for inviting me for this international FDP. Actually, it's truly an honor to be the part of this webinar series organized by MES College and with you, respected guests. A big thank you. MES management and its organizers. Today, we will be looking at the following. Here, all are the agendas. First part, introduction. Then, why now? When, what is AR, VR and XR? Then, uh, some sort of demos, then the future, and lastly, the question and answer session. Actually, today. I don't have a slides or presentation. Some of the things are played on my back of the screen. Okay. We all know information age gave us practical tools and access to data. But today's tech enabled generation is starting to favorite content consumption based on how we experience it. Futurists have long theories about a coming age 
where creativity and imagination become the primary creators of economic value. I repeat, creativity and imagination become the primary creators of economic value. We live in a world where we are swimming in a hyper-connected sea of data and we know that power is connected to your ability to access, deploy, model and digest the information. So, how do we navigate this hyper-connected ocean of data in the best possible way? What is clear in a world where information is very rich? American Nobel Prize winning economist, sociologist and computer scientist Herbert Simon predict this. A wealth of information create a poverty of attention. A wealth of information create a poverty of attention. And we are looking why now? Why now this topic? In a world driven by technology, classroom has adapted to an ever-changing landscape to create new educational experiences. Immersive learning is a contemporary learning style that uses technology to engage your senses that traditional lecture might not be able to accomplish. There are four basic categories of learning style that most students fall under. First one, visual. Second one, auditory. Then writing, reading and kinetic. Classic lecture type typically engage auditory and written learning styles while occasionally use of visual to illustrate a point. This method works for many different subjects while other subjects like science, would benefit from the inclusion of lab experiment kinetic elements. In the same way uh, that a photo or video can help students visualize a challenging script or concept. Immersive learning can add new elements to the standardized curriculum and engage the senses. Actually, it's bad I think. Our students are struggling to process large amount of information at one time. We all know that they are learning uh, five to six subjects a day and we are teaching them. They are very much of struggling in that large amount of information at one time. So that they, uh, they can quickly become disengaged. So we are trying to look into new ideas, new forms. This arguably applies to all type of learners, whether it's in school setting or a college, on a workspace, training course or in a lifelong learning. Some people are uh, visual learners, for like me, I am also a visual learner. After all, which means the ability to see a process rather than read or hear about it is far more in impactful for them. This is where virtual reality VR and augmented reality AR can add real value to the learning process. These extended reality XR technologies can create you or create immersive world where students can visualize concept and learn new skills and information in an interactive way. See, first one, virtual reality, which is a fully artificial environment and full immersion in virtual environment. Then augmented reality, AR, virtual objects 
overlaid on real environment the real world enhances with digital object the last one mixed reality virtual environment combined with real world interact with both the real world and the virtual environment so now let's dive into each one vr vr is a computer generated environment that can be experienced from all angles two mediums typically used for vr actually i am uh, talking you all about this there are some misconceptions for vr ar mr so um, i said two forms or two mediums are typically used for vr one form is through a computer where students can click around the digital environment and zoom in any spot they are most interested in vr can be used for decades in the form of flight simulators so the technology is certainly not new i am uh, not telling you about any new technology or coming or any sci fi things or all the technologies i am telling you is right now happening what is or what has changed is that what was previously expensive highly specialized now it's changed and fixed to one location has now become cheap available for general use and portable you can easily now get um, a vr headset in google uh, flipkart amazon as long cheap as 1500 to 500 and costly as 50000 60000 a notable example of this form of vr is the street view feature on google maps you can sorry we all are using google maps daily but you can check it you can type any destination your favorite destination via viewer circle image also ms college already uploaded a visual to it's actually quite very interesting we can see the whole campus by clicking and looking around there are some interactive points there and you will get some information there there are many spherical images like computer science lab 2d animation lab garment construction lab studio floor library bio science lab and college lobby
Luckily, I am also a Google trusted street view professional photographer. The other form is to a special headset that blocks your peripheral vision while projecting video image into each eye, making you feel like you are inside the virtual world. This is actually a 2D, but with the help of a special headset, making you feel like you are inside a virtual world. The headset device can look like a gaming device. Right now, if I am wearing a Google uh, VR cardboard headset or any other headset, some of them may think it's awkward. Oh, that guy looks very different. But in the future, many will be wearing that kind of devices on our head. Let's discuss with some examples. We know that college trips can be very expensive, right? No? Or IVs, not very much affordable to parents, especially after the COVID-19 crisis, which means they are in necessary open to all students. But with VR, virtual reality, field trips could uh, become a lot more accessible, affordable, and dare I say, dare I say, more interesting. After all, in theory, any kind of experience is possible in VR. Any kind of experience is possible in VR. Nothing is impossible in VR. If you like to have a walk on the moon, no problem. If you love to see some polar bears in Arctic and some selfies with bears, sure, why not? Google is actually removing the typical, typical barriers to field trips and creating amazing experience for students through its Google Expedition app. The platform actually discontinued on June 30th, 2021 and was merged into Google Arts and Culture. It's their website. From virtual reality, the world's first large scale 3D printed sculpture. This is actually a 360 degree VR video. We are clicking and swiping around. But if you are watching in a mobile device or using a head mounted display, HMD, you can actually turn your heads around to look around. Playing videos in PC or browser is not very immersive. A HMD, it will be very immersive. This is an ad by Oculus Quest 2. Okay, Google Arts and Culture is formally known as uh, Google Arts Project. It's an online platform 
of high resolution images and videos of artwork and cultural artifacts from partner cultural organization throughout the world they have, they have many collaborations it, uh, it utilizes higher resolution images very high resolution images and technology image technology that enables the viewer to to partner organization collection actually in kerala one art gallery is coming to open soon based on vr and the galleries they explore the artwork physical and contextual information the platform includes advanced search capabilities and education tool actually google arts and culture is specially designed for teachers that's why i shared to you to use with your classes the app offer hundreds of advantages many hundreds of more than 500 some using vr and some using ai um spanning across history science arts and the natural world in vr experience student embark on an immersive simulated experience um to destination like mount everest and this can be done using super cheap google cardboard vr headset it's very cheap in meanwhile the ai our main topic ai experience bring abstract concept to life in the classroom for example the teacher could project a swirling tornado or beehive in the classroom into the classroom so students can get a closer look oh wow did you ever how to dissect a frog in high school it's an open question did you ever had how to dissect a frog in high school yes or no no i did and i hated it actually the frog had a worse time obviously now this do some experience can be replaced by ai similar to like this Frogipedia it's not an android application it's an ios application that lets students study their internal organ of a frog this is the application it's currently available in ios platforms using this these applications students can air study frog organs it's just an example there are many tons of application available in all platforms and application stores so here students can either study frog organs individually or their dissection options which let them poke around the complex internal structure of frog organ system 
without harming any poor frogs plus additional benefit the student get to see the incredible transformation that frog go through like egg to tadpole then from tiny froglet to a fully from frog whatever you want to learn in your everyday life extended reality could improve the experience this can be done through applications on ar compatible smartphones so you just need a smartphone for doing this this will let you look through your phone's camera lens to view the augmented images on your smartphone screen i will explain another example the most notable example of ar use was the 2016's mobile game pokemon go anyone notice pokemon go or anyone played pokemon go yeah most of the children right it's very popular in that time do you know the special feature of that game Every, everyone every student got addicted to that game on the time period 2016 there are also many reported side effect side cases also you know this game which allowed the application to access your camera so that you can see pokemon creatures in the real world it's actually uses your gps phone camera because ar is rooted reality rooted in reality it can be used in addition to classical teaching style with ar students can use their smartphone to see comments or label on diagram that have the option to read more about something they need for the clarification teachers can show their students the solar system in their classroom or 3d models of object to study up close without storing and transporting them like the google expedition app also another example take public speaking as an example right everyone is afraid of public speaking most of the time there is an application or company that provides virtual speech award winning we are provide virtual speech it's the link they actually provide different parties web based simulations and virtual reality through this application whether you want to master speaking in front of large audience become more confident in networking setting or simple simply deliver better pitches and presentation to smaller audience 
virtual speeches via e learning courses can help after donning a vr headset remember this can be very inexpensive you find yourself in front of a simulated audience with the help of virtual speed application of the web based application there will be a simulated audience in front of you you can then practice your speech or presentation with a real presentation slides if you want and get a real time feedback on your delivery and monitor over time the tool can even be used by corporate corporations to train their teams and impressive 95 percentage of virtual space users said practicing in vr help them better prepare for real world simulations or situations 95 percentage of them somebody or you may be thinking that um, what virtual and augmented reality can only be used for gaming and entertainment that's also a misconcept but my team and i actually work across work across a different or a number of surprising industries actually the covid-19 pandemic has significantly promoted the adoption of virtual and augmented reality technologies as business have turned to remote work overall global spending on ar and vr headset software and service including purchases by consumer was in 2020 to 12 billion us dollars it's 50 percentage high from 2019 so now 12 billion us dollars in um, 2020 2021 32 to 40 percentage of consumers used ar for shopping it's not a big surprise many of our tech companies are implementing ar for shopping for shopping experience or virtually visit their showrooms the augmented reality and virtual reality market for the retail industry alone be expected to reach 2094 billion by 2027 let me share one video Penny walks in on location. She has to set up the space for a product unveil for a group of clients. Enter Microsoft HoloLens, the world's first untethered holographic computer. The device maps the room in order to construct a digital map of the space, allowing Penny to fill the room with holograms. What you see here is next generation hand tracking. Penny moves the holograms throughout the room in real time and space. The boxes react using physics-based simulations, just like they would in the real physical world. Sorry, Penny. This may be a bad time, but the client is on an earlier flight. <laughs> We're so not ready. Should we start to panic? 
Not yet. Just bring the team in, please. Windows brings spatial sound, articulated hand tracking, and Samir's own hands into VR. I can see you're hard at work, Samir, but Penny needs your help. Yeah, sure thing. Just let me check out this bunker real quick. Samir, the clients are all... As per usual, your sense of timing is just awesome. Kai-san, Penny is calling you, but... I'm going to go Kai joins the conversation as a hologram. Samir also appears as a 3D avatar, which he scanned himself using his phone. Cute. I try. So, how it's coming? It's not. This is the flagship store. It's gotta be, it's gotta be unforgettable. Yeah. Not exactly blowing my hair back. Yeah, the space is driving me nuts. All right. How about a change of scenery? Welcome to Think Club. Imagine the web of the future, where you can draw inspiration from the cloud, in three dimensions, and all around you. Some inspiration, please. Namaste. These bots help them interface with businesses. This one helps them find amazing 3D assets. Inspiration comes from Kai uses a pen and Samir uses a specialized controller in order for them both to manipulate and design the 3D creation. The team forgets that they are not together physically as they continue collaborating on the design. Penny picks up the eyedropper to grab a color from the physical ceiling in order to make things feel more anchored. Through the conversational bot, we see a real-time translation of what Penny's client is saying. Impressive. That went well. This video is actually based on Windows Mixed Reality. It's what's next coming up. Many prototypes are already available in the market, but it's very expensive, like uh, three to four lakhs. Why all we are using like these kind of technologies daily? Because human beings want to be involved, involved into something. If you are watching a movie, you would like to involve in that movie like, oh, maybe I will be that actor or actress. Have you ever seen a ghost in real life? Question to you. Have you ever seen a ghost in your real life? Anyone? No? Not yet? Interesting. Why? Anyone seen me before? Anyone? Yeah, somebody says don't believe. What if I will say I am a ghost? Do you believe me? I am saying I am a ghost. Hmm. 
Actually, I am a ghost. Can anyone say how? Because I am in virtual condition, right? So you can name me as a virtual ghost. The participants right now attending this webinar are all virtual ghosts because no one is real, right? It's all virtual image or virtual video. I am a virtual participant, right? In that sense, I am a ghost, virtual ghost. So we are opening up our new ways of thinking. You can just, um, you know, you can maybe create a short film or video using normal cameras. But for VR or AR, you have to think out of the box. Because what you are creating is different. That's what I told you in the beginning. You need creative, you need creativity and imagination rather than information or knowledge because we will get information or knowledge from anywhere from textbooks google or some experiences but creativity and imagination that's come from you you won't get it from any books or searching in youtube so if you're creating a 360 degree or virtual reality video you have to think out of the box most of them are thinking it's only for gaming no it's not we can actually implement in our education system like a pedagogy I will share another video. This is actually a commercial video which use the XR, extended reality technology. You actually you cannot differentiate. This is uh, actually use XR or VFX or any other thing. Let me show you. Narrated by famous actor Morgan Freeman. Dr. Forrest, dial one there are those we count on to support us, no matter what. Is everything okay, Doctor? Whether we see them or not, we need to know that they're always there. For the past 25 years, Massimo has been monitoring patients in hospitals around the world so that doctors and nurses can make sure you feel safe. As new challenges have arisen, we've grown to bring that same safety and support to the place that you want to be. There's only one way to rise above, together. Massimo, together in hospital, together at home. Uh, some of you may say it's VFX, but it's actually not. This commercial actually utilizes the power of XR, which means extended reality. We all know the traditional movie platform changed to OTT. Like that, in the future, in the upcoming future, all things may change gradually like the way we see movies advertisements or commercials or see any other videos
what if i say uh, we can actually um, decrease the anxiety or stress using vr or ar or a parallel medicine to morphine actually it helpful it's not a big surprise for, for you very working out example many international organization and hospitals are now using virtual reality to treat patients not only in education sector in medical section they are using for treating patients a concept that really important for any other any reality is called presence it's what you have to think right very important presence I will show you another video. This video based on augmented reality. Like I said, many corporates are integrate, integrating augmented reality into reality it's od link application Okay, I'm skipping. We all know many of our subjects are really boring, right? What if that boring subject in VR, like um, art history, mathematics, chemistry, especially mathematics? how we can implement in mathematics yes with the help of vr we can actually create a an application for tables the students want 
get easily forget that things this because they are actually interacting in that vr that interaction is actually not happening in real classrooms students may ask questions or doubts but even after uh, two days one week they will forget things or forget things I will show you an image. See? Corner of learning. After two weeks, we tend to remember 10% of what we read, right? 20% of what we hear and 30% of what we see and 50% of what we hear and see, we tend to remember in after two weeks and 70% of what we say and 90% of what we say and do like the examples reading words looking at pictures watching a movie looking at an exhibit watching a demonstration seeing in dawn on location participating in discussion giving a talk doing a dramatic presentation simulating the real experience doing the real thing you see the nature of involvement passive and active actually if they are doing then 90 percentage of what we say and do will be remembered after even after two weeks that's why we are trying to implement vr or ar or any other extended realities in our classrooms because they are actually doing it or engaging. Also, getting into our last area, the future. Can you say what about what's next for the future? Any guess? What's next? You can comment below. What will happen next? Anyone? Yeah, daughter Rama Devi. Technology is going to roll. Yes, actually, technology is now rolling. But besides its versatility as a virtual remote learning tool xr which means extended reality can provide our students with multi sensory experience that are impossible in the real world like improvement in memory recall and improves by 
twenty percentage or up to twenty five percentage memory recall and response. Also, you can use uh, this technology in very uh, risky or dangerous environment or operating heavy machinery or in medicine life saving surgeries you can all these practice in virtual or augmented conditions we all say we chase about thousand words right we chase about thousand words but by using VR and AR it's actually thousand pictures or videos it means it's very highly impactive by using XR medical students can see the inside of a human heart and better understand how the wall work with mixed reality or impossibly with a cadaver geology oceanography and astrophysics classes can use XR to let uh, student explore inside a volcano travel miles down into the ocean next to hydro hydrothermal vent or light years away to explore a black hole yeah right it will be very interesting educators can also structure extra curricula extra curricula as games to offer an alternative to more traditional teaching or teaching modes gamified extra because with games some learners may feel more comfortable failing often and quickly which is fundamental to learning and not unlike re in a game to continue to hone their skills. This highlight another benefit of XR in higher education because the ability of um, students to work at their own pace the ability of student work at their own pace that's the difference and to repeat lessons and exercise as often as needed also uh, we are looking into 5g and the edge computing open to door to xr it's actually a wider option uh, by higher 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 education institutions uh, due to 5G capabilities and edge computing. XR requires high speeds and low latency which are the hallmarks of 5G network. It's coming soon. Edge and cloud computing architecture make it possible to more effectively or efficiently and economically process massive massive amount of data closer to end users there are many XR applications that handles this by splitting process work between devices and the cloud we all have these technologies around us here and there but if I am again asking the same question, what's the future? It actually the future depends upon you. The future is you. There, there is a famous quote by Mahatma Gandhi. The future depends on what you do today. Many universities are, are all already implied or implementing VR, AR, MR courses into their curricula. Many open courses are at present now available by different universities or colleges. If you are failing um, to do or implement 
you are not going to catch up with others because every day technology is changing we have to keep up with them i will share you another video you all know the company xiaomi they actually uh, showcased the display in front of your eyes video 2 weeks ago some day in the future smartphones may become a thing of the past imagine every smartphone function integrated into what you wear today we're introducing xiaomi's first pair of smart eyewear calling viewing navigating camera all integrated in a pair of glasses Xiaomi smart glasses use optical waveguide technology for lens display capabilities at its core is a 0.13 inch micro LED display smaller than a grain of rice light output is as high as 2 million nits through reflection and diffusion of the optical waveguide lens a much larger display is offered to the eye view notification phone calls HUD navigation Shall I Tongshui translate the menu Okay translating the menu and take photos it was said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Xiaomi Smart Glasses uses an engineering mindset to create a future viewpoint. actually um, use the technology called mixed reality MR it's actually uh, the merging of real and virtual world to produce new environment and visualizations where physical you see you already uh, see the commercial video physical and digital object actually coexist and interact in real time it's actually a big leap into the technology Obviously, there will be many privacy concerns. Many years back, uh, Google released their Google Lens or Google Specs. Actually, they withdrew due to many privacy concerns. Because in these devices, image recognition software is implied or applied. So, uh, someone get into front of these devices, our glasses will actually scan. There is a big privacy issue. They will um, search all your results in the internet available information. Instantly see information from FB, Twitter or any other online platforms. It is a very big privacy issue but you will get a blended reality using these glasses actually one more thing microsoft also introducing microsoft mesh we actually see all these things in Afanjay's movie like Iron Man, swiping around here and there, seeing hood graphics in Iron Man's head 
holographics computer but in near by future it will all happen in microsoft mesh tools Problem. Connection is a spark that gives our lives meaning. It drives us to seek out others who feel the same way. Okay, why don't you input the data and we'll take a look together. Hey Mari, what you got for me? To find those who share our views, yet offer different perspectives. Saw this net. Look over here. Challenge us with new work. Again, a disclaimer. This is not a VFX content. These are all real. Ways of seeing. But I think we should... Deepen our understanding. And enrich our lives. Great things happen when we commit to something bigger than ourselves. Take a closer look at it. Place this here. Let's see how we go from there, okay? This sense of collaboration and the feelings of connection it brings excites us. Hey, just in time. I'm going to move it slightly, okay? It's yours, take it. We have two planes right now on the same trajectory. As we put people first, technology fades into the background and feels like anything but. Asia, what do you think? I think if we had 330, maintaining 2800, we'll be clear for approach. Excellent. This changes the way we see the world, and in turn, changes the world we see. These numbers are looking great, actually. There's promise in the possibilities. And what we see and create next will stretch the imagination. Good morning, Sarah. Morning. Slowly coming towards the thumb. A world without boundaries. Good job. A lot better than yesterday. Yeah. Excellent. Slowly bring the A world down. where technology enhances, not limits, humanity. I'm actually skipping. There are also many examples like Facebook Horizon, I already mentioned the Google Street View application. Also, you can watch Ready Player One, or anyone watch that movie by Stephen Spielberg, Ready Player One. It's actually a very futuristic sci-fi video, sci -fi, sorry, sci-fi movie. But Steven Spielberg clearly showing us what's coming in the future. It's uh, the movie based uh, and set on 2045. If you are getting a chance for watching that movie, definitely worth much time. Then Google Lens application. Then many of us are already using Snapchat based on augmented reality then instagram filters based on augmented reality also facebook ar maps are also coming up even if you don't have a 360 degree camera you can capture using google cardboard google cardboard camera Many other companies like Reliance, uh, Geo already introduced their own glasses like 
दसायो मी ओके इट्स फोर फोर्टी वन बबी अम्मा कैन वी गो टू द क्यू एंड ए हेलो बबी अम्मा Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, we can. Participants, uh, if you have any doubts, please, please ask your query here. The technology is actually. changing day daily so you have to think right now and implement right now actually our presentations or videos are getting bored by our students so we have to think other possibilities for teaching Hindu. Yes, yes, miss. So, next session is the vote of thanks. Participants, uh, if you have any doubts, please please clear your doubts here in this platform. Sir, I have one question, sir. Okay. So, uh, how can we teachers uh, use this uh, re uh, this uh, augmented reality in teaching students? Actually, uh, there are many applications in our uh, Play Stores or App Stores, but uh, there are only a limited amount of contents. That's the problem right now there are only a limited uh, limited amount of content so we have to create that contents 3d models then you can implement it sir okay sir sir i have one question sir what if what type of challenges the educator have to face while using this augmented reality in teaching methods um many actually uh, the students will get easily distracted by other messages or pop ups in their own devices so we have to take care of that also okay also they need a good uh, smartphone not a low end smartphone or tablet will help for uh, creating or doing the augmented reality we need at least a good smartphone or tablet julie ma'am yes hindu yes um, thank you sir very very nice presentations and he has already clarified all the queries mentioned in the chat box earlier and let me conclude now <clears throat> respected resource person and all participants for actively participating in the faculty development program the session was very informative and fruitful i hope 
this session help each one of us to become more knowledgeable in the concept of augmented reality on be on behalf of mes college marambali and ipsc and i extend my gratitude to sir who sir who spared his valuable time with us the new concept of uh, augmented reality and its insights it is really a valuable discussion sir thank you sir thank you all over to intu thank you sir thank you julie ma'am thank you so much thank you joseph for such a wonderful presentation uh, participants please stay back for our validity session we will be starting our validity session soon uh, joseph please stay with us sir for the validity session we will be starting soon everyone good evening to all it is an immense pride to be here before all of you this evening on behalf of iqac mes college marambali we are delighted to offer a gracious welcome to our function one week international faculty development program on fostering digital courses in academic landscape may i take the pleasure of requesting our respected iqac coordinator and the convener of the ftp dr jasmine pm to welcome the gathering ma'am please thank you i am mary good evening all of you i am extremely happy that the faculty development program fostering digital core competencies in the academic landscape has been successfully completed and now we are in the validity session we had a couple of uh, good lectures during the last five days and today also and i am sure that the cooperation of the participants made this program a grand success and i hope that each one of us gained a lot from this one week ftp the efforts taken by the coordinators and the entire team is worth mentioning i take this opportunity to congratulate all the team members behind this ftp for making this event more beautiful now let me take move on to my duty without taking much more time first of all i would like to welcome our billard principal dr mansoor ali pp to this program hearty welcome to you sir thank you thank you very much now we have with us today's resource person mr jos j maliyekal and we also have resource persons dr achit shankar s nayar dr geeta janet and dr vinu sharmon with us and i take this opportunity to welcome all those three to this program on behalf of ms college marambali and on behalf of all the participants present here thank you ma'am last but not the least i would like to welcome all my dear colleagues at ms college marambali and all the participants to this program thank you have a nice evening thank you ma'am now i invite ms babya kamal kenneno program coordinator to read the report of ftp ma'am please thank you and report of one week international faculty development program sustainable education requires a shift towards active participative and experiential learning methods to engage the learner and make a real difference to their understanding thinking and ability to act transformative education with participatory teaching and learning methods that motivate and empower learners to change their behavior and take action for sustainable development is the need of the hour international faculty development program on the topic fostering digital core competencies in academic landscape under ugc parama scheme in association with kerala state higher education council was conducted from 20th september 2021 to 25 september 2021 
we are indeed blessed that we had many international registrations from Philippines, Oman, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and also from different parts of our country like Tamil Nadu, Bangalore, Uttarakhand, Hyderabad, etc. The program began on 20th September 2021 at 9 a.m. by invoking the blessings of God Almighty by Ms. Aradi J, fifth semester of BSc Electronics on the Zoom platform. Dr. Jasmine PM, IPSC coordinator and program convener, welcomed the gathering. Dr. Mansoor Ali PP, principal and the organizing chairman, offered the presidential address. The program was inaugurated by Professor Dr. Rajan Gurukal, Vice Chairman, Kerala State Higher Education Council. He recommended that the higher education is undergoing a radical and fundamental change, and the gravity of transformation has been recognized by the education sector. Now the college has switched to digitally equipped environment and technology equipped pedagogy. According to him, the role of institution is to create an accomplished ICT environment for the teachers and students to work digitally. Mr. Yami Mohammed, Chairman and Advocate Abul Hassan, Secretary and Correspondent of the College Managing Committee, addressed the audience. Shri Madelina C. Shegar, Staff Association Secretary of the College, offered the felicitation. Shri Madhi Sufaira Shamsuddin, Program Coordinator, gave the official vote of thanks. Day one. The chair of the session was Ms. Jasmine S., Head Department of Human Resources. Day one has a session on internationalization of education by Dr. Murali Tumarukodi, Operation Manager, Crisis Management Branch, UN Environment, Geneva. Dr. Murali Tumarukodi expressed the views on how the United Nations dealt with the COVID pandemics and how the education transformed into online education. He also discussed about the new education policy introduced recently. How Coursera became very popular in the online platform was also discussed. Day two, the chair of second day session was Dr. Umesh BT, head department of bioscience. A PP session was on using multiple intelligence in teaching and the resource person was Professor Dr. Achut Shangar S. Nair, department of computational biology and bioinformatics, University of Kerala. He spoke about how a teacher can use multiple intelligence, whether it is emotional intelligence, linguistic intelligence, intra or interpersonal intelligence in a classroom. It was absolutely wonderful and insightful session with live examples. And he discussed how a student get interest in the words spoken by a teacher. He also asked to make the teaching style more enjoyable, versatile and make the transformation to improve the teaching methods. Finally, the teaching should be as per student requirement of understanding. Day three, the session was chaired by Dr. Susan Burgess, Assistant Professor, Department of Psychology. FTP session was on prospects, practices, and prescriptions for sustainable happiness. And the resource person was Professor Dr. Gida Janet Peters, Professor and Head, Department of Education, University of Kerala. She expressed her views on sustainable happiness, which contributes to individual, community, or global well being without exploiting other people, the environment, or future generation. She also discussed on how to measure the happiness, its components, and what determines how happy we are. Therefore, Mr. Sam Colonel Yu, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics, was the chair of four day faculty development program. The session was on enabling faculty to create e-content for MOOCs platform and the resource person was Mr. Manoj Kumar, Senior Content Editor, Kerala Infrastructure and Technology for Education Prevention. Mr. Manoj Kumar discussed how the Victor's channel was created and catered to the classes according to different MOOCs. He also discussed how chroma shooting was done with green or blue screens and how the sub scientific subjects was taught using the whiteboard by using a neon marker. Day five, the session was chaired by Dr. Rafika Molsiye, head department of commerce. The session was on indispensable resources for academic researchers. And the resource person was Dr. Vino Sherimon, Department of Information Technology, Higher College of Technology, Al Koer Muscat. Dr. Vino Sherimon discussed briefly about how to create a research and what were the challenges in doing a research. 
various research tools and the use of Google Scholar, Altmetric, Medline, and the different ways to check the plagiarism were explained briefly by the resource person. Day six, Dr. Julie M. David, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Application, chaired the last day session. FTP was on the future for immersive technology in education, augmented reality. And the resource person was Mr. Jose J. Maliakin, Assistant Professor, St. Joseph College of Communication, Cotter. The resource person discussed about the interactive experience of a real world environment. Virtual reality, mixed reality, and augmented reality were explained briefly. Overlaying visual, auditory, or other sensory information onto the world in, other, in order to enhance one's experience were also discussed in the session. We had 250 participants consistently attending in all the sessions. They shared their valuable ideas and thoughts in all the sessions. The program came to an end by 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request our respected principal, Dr. Mansoor Ali PP, for the presidential address. So please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope I am audible to you all. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Indemis, for your assistance. So it is indeed a great day for MES College Marambali, uh, the hectic international faculty development program. Why I am using the word hectic? Because, you know, these days uh, we have switched to uh, synchronous, synchronous to asynchronous mode and uh, we were you know excited in the beginning to uh, attend uh, you know in webinar session and we found that attending webinar sessions are a kind of you know uh, a kind of not not a kind of it's seriously you know it's uh, very difficult and it is you know sometimes will distract us and of course i can see that and in some of the you know, in the, during the starting days, I was there in two, three sessions. And afterwards, you know, I was pretty busy with the admission uh, schedule of MG University. Today, uh, you know, in the evening, we have closed the admission procedure. So that's what I couldn't follow the, uh, you know, the remaining uh, session, especially uh, uh, Gita, Janet, Mams, and uh, Vinu Sharin. So sorry for that. And uh, uh, Oh, that's why, that's what I was, you know, wanted to point. Though we had webinar session, I could see that in all the sessions, there had, you know, around 300, 300 participants. And that too, from the words of Babia Miss, the coordinator, uh, I could understand that there had participants from different countries and different states. And I truly congratulate the organizers, uh, the Internal Quality Assurance Cell, headed by uh, Dr. Jasmine. Uh, PM, head of the Department of Electronics, and there is a vibrant team of IQAC, and that is why we were, you know, able to get the first, uh, you know, accreditation of A plus grade by NAC in the revised format. And also, uh, the UGC has appreciated our effort so that we should mentor the neighboring institution also to acquire the uh, benchmark or the standards of quality. So that's why that's what the ultimate aim of all these procedures to you know upskill and to upgrade ourselves as faculty members and uh, that is how you know we can be included in QS ranking or you know time ranking within 100 that's what we should focus on the higher education we are all higher education teachers and there are multiple ways we can induce ourselves and we can, we can excite our students that's why the whole uh, you know, uh, six days exercise uh, of faculty development program. So I truly appreciate all the resource person. And I was, uh, you know, there in the Achushangar uh, sir session and also Rajan Gurukal sir words and, uh, you know, the words of wisdom of uh, Murali Tumarukudi, I was there. And all the, you know, I could understand from the report itself, they were, you know, all interesting and uh, it's all covered or what are the competencies, especially the digital com core competencies. So that to, uh, you know, uh, so that being ourselves obsolete and we should be, you know, relevant in the new, uh, you know, uh, shift of education and the de facto, uh, you know, synchronous learning. That's what the ultimate aim. I hopefully uh, uh, we have met the, uh, you know, the objectives of this faculty development program. Once again, I congratulate all the resource person and all the uh, participants 
and all the faculty members, please excel in your career and please be part of our national building. That is my humble request. And I will be remaining to have the words of uh, or the feedback of participants. That that's what, you know, uh, the criticism or the encouragement, what we're looking for. Uh, have a nice evening. Thank you once again. Uh, have a nice evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your inspiring words. The success of a program directly depends upon the participants and the participation. We have many participants, international participants like from Philippines, Dubai, Oman, Pakistan, etc. and from different parts of our country like Uttaragand, Tamil Nadu, Bangalore and so on. Dear participants, we would like to hear from you. So please unmute yourself and share your valuable feedback. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I feel the FDP was overall excellent and very seamless. Materials as well as the instructors were excellent. I learned a lot and especially the session resources for academic researchers. This FDP will definitely help to the participants in performing their best in the coming future. And congratulations to all the organizers, all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Am I audible, uh, madam? You are. Yes, sir, you are. Uh, yes, I also, uh, uh, I want to say that I really feel lucky to be part, uh, to be a participant in this FDP on digital core competencies. So actually this uh, entire program was very meticulously planned, which I see here. And subjects uh, were uh, very carefully chosen to make it interesting, uh, like uh, VR and uh, digital resources for research, creating e-content for MOOC, and uh, above all, how to remain happy. That was really, I liked it. Uh, so I congratulate the organization, uh, these organizers, for this program and uh, I would like to be a uh, participant for your future trainings. Uh, so again, I thank you all. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you so much, Manish, sir. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Ayama Koro from Pakistan and thank you so much for inviting me such a great session on FTP and please uh, invite me on other sessions related to these kind of activities all the very best thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much am i audible ma'am yes ma'am of course Good afternoon, uh, myself Priyanka Itambi, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, St. Paul's College, Kalamashiri. Actually, I'm very thankful for MES College for organizing such a wonderful and informative session for all the faculties. Uh, the sessions that we uh, you were organized was from eminent personalities, the eminent resource persons, and the topics that you have covered in various disciplines. And I'm sure that we as faculties, we can implement all these things in our teaching learning process to make this uh, more effective. So once again, um, thank you MES College for organizing this uh, big program for us and a special note of appreciation for all the coordinators for the wholehearted support. So in future also, we are expecting a lot more from you like this programs. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. We are Hello. blessed. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. Thank you for organizing such a great uh, FDP. I am very happy and uh, I 
have learned a lot from your FTP. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are blessed because we have our resource presence here with us. Let me invite Professor Dr. Achuk Shangar Esnaya for sharing your experience with us. So please. Hello, give me a minute. Hola, Patti, we are talking about the internet. You can hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Ah. So I just want to say hello to all the participants and uh, congratulate the organizers for uh, making this event truly international with a lot of participants from outside the country also and from outside the state. Um, I've, I've spoken my heart out on the theme that was allotted to me. I just need to add to you I, I heard many referring to a talk by Professor Ida Janet about how to remain happy. That is what really matters at the end of the day, that whether you are happy. Success is but another name for being happy. If you have a lot of money, if you have a lot of power and you are not happy, uh, then you, you, it is not real success. So um, be a happy teacher. That is what I would like to say to all, the, uh, all my fellow teachers here. Be a very happy teacher and then everything should fall in place. So uh, once again, congratulations to MES College for uh, the successful organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. We have here Professor Dr. Geeda Janet Whiters with us. Ma'am, please share your experience. Ma'am, please. Hello. Hello. Can you yes, hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Yeah, I'm also very happy uh, to be a part of your FDP. And I just heard Dr. Achushanga, Professor Achushanga uh, telling about my talk. And I'm blessed because he has given me opportunity elsewhere to talk about multiple intelligence and I know he took that topic for you and uh, it was a great pleasure for me to join an FTP organized, very well organized by MES College uh, Marampalli and of course that fostering digital core competencies in academic landscape was your topic but in between uh, I think my sustainable happiness part helped you a lot uh, because at the end of the day, we all wish to be happy. And as Sir said, uh, it was my great privilege to be a part of your FTP program. And I congratulate the college, the organizers, and I hope uh, you will be organizing more. And I have seen your February 2022 session also. Uh, I have seen the brochure. I'm very happy that you are doing a lot of things uh, for the benefit of the teachers and of course to the society. So all the very best, all the very best to the participants as well as a uh, great thank you from my heart because gratitude is one of the things which will bring in you more happiness uh, from my part to all the organizers and all the IQSE leaders and all the persons who are behind this, especially the principal who has taken keen initiative in organizing such a wonderful FTP. So all the very best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your pleasant words. We are all eagerly waiting to hear from you, ma'am. Dr. Vinu Sherimon. Ma'am, please. Hello. Hello, good evening, all. Uh, I'm again happy to join you to, uh, with all of you today during this uh, validatory function. Uh, Actually, I'm extremely thankful uh, to the management of MES 
and the organizers uh, for inviting me to be a part of this uh, wonderful FDP, particularly to uh, Dr. Jasmine, the IQAC coordinator, and the other all other members of the uh, this event who are constantly communicating. And uh, I can see the support you have given to all the participants. So congratulations for organizing this wonderful FDP. I can, uh, I was, I was attending all these sessions so I can feel the true, uh, the team spirit or the uh, hard work among the uh, coordinators who made this event a, a great success. And uh, to the participants, hope you had one week of uh, enjoyable and fruitful experience uh, with multiple topics. Uh, so even as a listener, I was also enjoying all the sessions from day one. Uh, so, uh, congratulations to MES College, principal, convener, coordinators, everyone, and dear participants, thank you very much for uh, all your comments on my session. Uh, hope uh, uh, you will be able to use the tools which I shared with you. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am, for your kind words. Thank you. Resource person, Mr. Josh J. Malikal is with us. Sir, please share your experience. Sir, please. Okay, I am really happy to be a part of this international FDP. It's actually a talk to be a part of this webinar series organized by MES College and with you, respected guest. Also, a special congratulations to MES Management and its organization. And this event is very really memorable. And thank you all dear participants for this being here today, for taking your time. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. As we come to the close of our valedictory ceremony, I invite Ms. Indu Susan Varghese, Program Coordinator, to propose the vote of thanks. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Anne. A very good evening to all. Respected Principal, Dr. Manzoor Ali PP, Honorable Resource Persons, Professor Dr. Achyut Shankar S. Nair, Professor Dr. Geeta Janet Vaitis, Dr. Vinu Sherimon, Mr. Jose J. Maliekil, IQAC Coordinator and Convener of this FDP, Dr. Jasmine PM, the FDP coordinators, Ms. Sufera Shamsuddin, Ms. Minu Muhammad, and Ms. Bhavya Kamalke Menon, all IQAC team, my colleagues, and dear participants. We are in the last day of one week online international faculty development program under UGC Paramarsh scheme in association with Kerala State Higher Education Council on fostering digital core competencies in academic landscape. Motivation behind this program was to enrich the educators in different aspects, especially to master the digital platforms used widely in the education sector. We are happy to hear from the participants that they really got enriched through this FTP. In this occasion, it is my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks to all the dignitaries assembled here. First of all, I would like to thank our beloved principal, Dr. Manzur Ali PP, who is the motivation and guiding star for us. We are honored to have you with us. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the entire institute, I would like to thank all the resource person who made this FTP a grand success by sharing their valuable knowledge with us. Thank you all. I would like to share our immense gratitude towards Professor Dr. Achyut Shankar Esnaya, Professor Dr. Gita Janet Whitis, Dr. Vinu Sherimon, Mr. Jose J. Maliekil for being with us today and for their inspiring words. 
all the sessions went fruitfully with the wholehearted support of the session chairs who lead the session in a fantastic way. Thank you, Ms. Jasmine S., Dr. Umesh Bitti, Dr. Susan Vargis, Mr. Sam Kolanu, Dr. Rafika Amol CA, Dr. Julie M. David, and thank you all for your support. Thank you, chairs. I express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Jasmine PM, convener of this FTP and IQAC coordinator, whose inspiration and guidance made this FTP possible. Thank you, ma'am, for the wholehearted support given to us throughout the program. Thank you, ma'am. I'm fortunate to thank the dedicated and well-motivated IQAC team of our college, whose sincere hard work made this FTP a grand success. Thank you all. I would also like to thank Anne Mary, who had done an excellent anchoring here, and Mr. Salil and Mr. Joel for providing an uninterrupted technical support. The strength and success of a program relies on the participants. So I thank all the participants from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you all.